statistics. I like graphs too. Maybe we're all geeks in this room and I'll be absolutely fine, but um, bear with me. It's not as exciting as the previous speakers, unfortunately. Um, what I want to talk about today uh, is um, impact measurement and a, a caveat up front. Um, we're not the first to do this in terms of national scouting organizations. We're certainly not the best. Um, this is just a case study that hopefully you'll find useful. Um, I, I, I know I, th I might have this wrong. I think Finland might have done a fair bit of this work before. Do I have any Finnish colleagues confirm or deny? Well, they're keeping quiet. I heard they did good stuff on impact measurement. Um, and I know the Boy Scouts of America have done loads of work in this space. So uh, hopefully you'll find our experience interesting. Um, but we don't suggest that we, we, we know it at all. Uh, I want to talk about what type of social impact I'm talking about, because the word is used interchangeably quite a lot. Um, why we should measure impact in scouting, what we should try and measure, um, how you can measure it, and a case study of a recent pilot project by WASM of which we were part of. Um, so, first of all, what, what is it we mean by social impact? Um, I suggest there's three ways that scouting impacts uh, on the individual and society. First of all, there's the individual impact, the young people who come along to scouting and how they develop as an individual. Quite utilitarian skills, things like teamwork, um, communication, leadership. These are all about the individual. Um, of course, that young person becomes an adult, and the types of behaviours and attitudes that scouting instills in them will have an impact on society. Are they more likely to volunteer? Are they more likely to vote? Are they less likely to commit crime? Less likely to be reliant uh, on the state or on medical care, etc., etc. So the impact on society that is. Uh, done through the young person and their development. And then, of course, scouting itself takes action in the here and now. Um, we've heard some really inspiring examples of where scouting has tried to make a difference in their communities. Young people picking the issues that they are consciously passionate about and thinking about what they could do. Um, I just want to be clear. Uh, I'm talking today about the personal development of the young person in the medium term and what that might mean for society in the long term. I'm not looking at how we measure the impact that we make through social action. And if anyone can tell me how to do that, that would be much appreciated. So it's these two things that I'm trying to talk about today. Uh, so why would we want to measure impact in scouting? You can frame this in two different ways. Um, you can frame it in the very positive, um, uh, positive reasons of why scouting should be excited about this. Um, and I'm going to talk through those first. So these are the happy reasons. Um, and here's a happy baby to go alongside it. Um, scouting does amazing things. And you don't need a statistic on a bit of paper to know that. You see it every day. And I think sometimes people feel instinctively uncomfortable with this impact measurement agenda because it feels quite scientific, whereas we all hold very emotional views of how we develop young people. So you don't need statistics, but society is constantly changing. Young people are constantly changing. The education system around them is constantly changing. And the only way that we can navigate that confidently is knowing if what we do works or not. We also want to make sure that we are winning the support of decision makers. Um, this agenda of impact measurement um, in many countries is becoming more prevalent in how government and trusts and foundations uh, give their cash and support. And even if you don't like this agenda of impact measurement, it will become increasingly common that if you don't have the evidence that what you do works, they won't give you the support. Um, and ultimately, we want our volunteers to be proud of what we do. And, and I'm not suggesting you need a statistic for volunteers to feel proud of how they develop young people. But I, I, 
if we are going to have them feel like they are making a difference on the same scale as they see teachers and educationists, then we should also give them the tools to say, I'm not just making this up. <laughs> There's hard evidence that I'm developing young people in a significant way. Oh, here's the angry baby. Um, I suggest there's some more um, harsh realities of why we need to do impact measurement. Uh, first of all, scouting does not have a right to exist. If there is another youth program that could help young people better, develop them more, then it should take our place. Because scouting is for young people, that's its purpose. And so it's not good enough for us to simply say, we've been here long enough, we should always continue. If we don't find that we have evidence um, that shows that we are real educational players, then everything that Edward was so compelling in talking about yesterday falls flat because schools can prove impact. We need to be able to do the same. I also suggest that if we don't know the type of impact we have for different types of young people, then we could be doing more harm than good. If it is the case that scouting actually takes relatively privileged young people and gives them more privilege, and yet young people who come from uh, more disenfranchised backgrounds don't get the same impact, we could be widening the attainment gap, not closing it. And finally, I, I've heard people challenge me before to say, well, the thing is, uh, what we do, you can't measure. It's too special, it's too unique. It's, it's, it's emotional, it's, you can't measure that. You can, and people have, for decades. And in reality, the outcomes that scouting seeks, although it suggests the way that we do it uh, is indeed unique, the outcomes are not. There are other youth programs that seek to have the same outcomes, and you can measure those as well. But I think everyone likes the happy baby more. So let's stick with um, the positives of why we should do impact measurement. And this is a really important thing to do within your national scouting organisation, because if you don't crack why you're doing this, then you'll become unstuck further down the line, because everyone won't be on the same um, journey of what it is you're trying to achieve. So in the UK, um, we agreed three things of why we wanted to do impact measurement. The first was to get better at what we do. If we can prove the types of outcomes that we are great at and ones that we're not so good at, we can do something about it. And we can take an evidence-led approach to doing that. And I'll talk more about some of the findings we had from our pilot and what it's forced us to think about. The second, I'm going to have to slow down, and the translator is Scottish. And when the Scottish translator is telling you to slow down, you know you have to take that seriously. Um, the second is how we prove that we're making an impact. Um, as I've said, decision makers, funders increasingly are interested in what evidence there is to back up what we say we do. And third, to make better decisions. This shouldn't be seen as more important or better than the views of our local volunteers. Lived experience is by far one of the most powerful ways to know if what we're doing works. But it's not mutually exclusive from having evidence and trends of what we're getting better at and what we should do better at. And so part of this is empowering your boards uh, and your senior volunteers to make better decisions about where we spend our time and our resource. Um, when we started this journey, which was about five years ago, um, we started with the how we're going to measure. And we did really well, we thought. <laughs> We'd come up with a way of how we were going to get young people to show us if they've developed. And then someone asked the question, what do you want to measure? Seems like a fair question. There was lots of different answers. If you think about the tools we have to articulate 
what scouting does and what it changes in young people. We have the promise and law. There's lots of outcomes within that. Uh, we have the method, lots of how we do things. We have educational objectives, and you'll all have different educational objectives in your national scouting organisation. You'll have different policies, and some of these things are constantly changing. So there's lots of different ways of saying what it is we do and what that changes in a young person. Um, and that's a challenge. If you try to take everything that you have that says how you make change and what change you make, then you'll never be able to design a method of measuring impact because there's too much. There's just too much. Let's take an example of where to focus on um, the objectives, uh, or the common objectives that WASM sets out around uh, physical, spiritual, mental, social. They're not specific enough. So when we say we develop young people intellectually, what do we mean? Do we mean that we're creating high-flying academics? That doesn't feel like what it is we're trying to do. Um, when we talk about developing young people physically, what, what just completely? It, it, is our objective to have high-performance athletes coming out of scouting? Being specific about what the outcomes are is really important because you won't find the right tools to help you measure impact if you're, if you're not crystal clear on the type of outcomes you want to make. And often, because we have many different sources telling us what scouting does and what change it makes, not very often does it link the activity to the outcome. And the problem with that is, if I measure an outcome, but I don't know what activity was meant to lead to that outcome, w what am I going to do about it? It's nice to have a statistic, but what am I going to change so that we make have more of an impact and make more outcomes? Um, so uh, w we require a theory of change. Um, it, it just quick hands up, but uh, people heard of a theory of change before? A few hands. Not too many. Yeah, okay. Um, it's, it, it's not a complicated tool. What it essentially does is try and force you to think about what impact do you want to have? What long-term change are you trying to make? What changes do you have to make in the medium term to reach that impact? What would you have to do to try and reach those outcomes? And what do you need to do it? These are often just called a logic chain, because logically, you put something in, that puts something out, something in the short term changes, and that leads to long term change. And this process allows you to talk to volunteers and staff about what it is you think you do very specifically in scouting. So as an example, um, if we want to create active citizens in the long term, then what we might think we need to do is create better leadership skills in young people. A way of doing that is supporting them to take social action and run community projects. To do that, we need well-supported <coughs> volunteers. And it's just a logic chain that goes through. But the important bit is, what this does is it tells you a story. I now know that in the long term, I want to measure whether we've created active citizens. I know in the short term, I need to know do young people have better leadership skills or not? Are we running social action projects? Is that happening on the ground? And do we have well-supported volunteers to do that? So we spent a lot of time um, developing a theory of change with a lot of people. And it's important that it's very participatory, that involves lots of different people. So we surveyed um, around 5,000 adult volunteers and 6,000 young people, be asking them what are the most important outcomes of scouting and what do you think the most important activities are to achieve it. We had workshops where we took all that information and had young people and volunteers and staff and board members try and boil that down into a theory of change. 
and we saw a lot of advice from external organisations because a lot of uh, youth movements, and particularly international development, um, have done this work before. And so we created our theory of change, which I won't go into much detail here. Um, there's a workshop after this that uh, please feel free to come along to hear more detail. Um, but in short, it took us on a journey from where a young person joins, where they value and live by the scout promise and law. So what values do we, do we ask them to reflect on? We ask them, uh, what do they participate in? What are the activities they actually do? How do they experience it? So learning by doing, taking decisions, making choices. Right through to the outcomes that we think we achieve. And we do also make some impact, but the projectors cut that off. There is some impact here, I promise. Um, to go into that in a little more detail, because this is important, you have to be really specific and constantly ask the question, and what? And what more? So we said we should participate in a very balanced programme, but, but what does that look like? And so we went into the detail of, well, it's sessions where they learn different types of practical skills, where they learn outdoor skills, where they take part in physical adventurous activity. We got really specific, because if you're not specific here, then you won't know what's causing the change later down the line. And exactly the same for outcomes. So our outcomes, we went down to be as specific as to say, we think they should be more physically active, should know how to lead a healthy lifestyle, value the outdoors more, and be willing to try new things. These are just two examples. Um, leadership, leadership's really interesting. We, we didn't talk about leadership as an outcome in scouting. None of our uh, different sources of what we did said better leadership. We used leadership as a means to an end, but we didn't talk about it as an outcome. And so we had to try and define, well, what do we mean by leadership? So we boiled it down to responsible and trustworthy, increased teamwork skills, and more likely to take initiative and act as a role model. Um, Again, that's really important and a challenge, I think, for us working together because leadership in our context will mean something very different to leadership in another part of the world. Okay, so we got to a point of knowing what we wanted to measure, so how would we measure it? There are different ways of which you can measure impact and it's got to be proportionate to your resources, and you have to focus on what you really want to know about. You can start with just case studies. Like it's perfectly valid to have stories and case studies of what young people do and achieve as a form of evidence. It's just not very robust. Outputs. How many badges do they achieve? How many events do they go to? This is valid evidence as well, but it tells you nothing about what changes in the young person. You can collect subjective evidence quite easily. Surveys asking young people, do you feel more confident? Do you enjoy scouting? Do you feel happier? Again, this gives you a, a slightly more robust level of evidence. But again, if a young person enjoys their scouting experience, they're probably going to say that they're more confident. They're probably going to say that um, they got something out of it doesn't mean necessarily in the long term we've made any change. And so you can do subjective controlled evidence. And what that means is you're still asking the young person, what do you think? Do you think you've developed? But you might test that against a young person who's not done scouting and compare and contrast. Um, and then if you can, and we've not managed this, you can have objective evidence. So Many of our countries will collect um, information about educational attainment for all young people. Uh, you could follow that educational journey of a young person in scouting and a young person not in scouting, but who looks very similar to that young person who did scouting. And if there's a difference, you can then say some of that might be down to scouting. But it's worth taking time not to think about 
you're not going to do this from day one. It's really expensive. <laughs> it takes a lot of time and a lot of expertise. And so seeing this as a journey over many years is perfectly legitimate. And you might want to think as an NSO, where do we want to start and how long will it take us to get to the place we want to be? Um, I'm now going to give a bit of a case study of the pilot we did with WASM, uh, which you could put in this box here of subjective controlled. So what did we do? Um, uh, WASM coordinated a pilot between ourselves in the UK, Kenya and Singapore. It involved asking questions to young people in scouting and out of scouting in those three countries. Um, the questions themselves were made up. There was a group of staff and volunteers sat in a room and made up the questions aligned to um, WASM's educational objectives. But they were made up. I'll come back to that because that's important. Um, we used an external data analyst, so it was a robust statistical approach, um, but we had to go external to do that. The challenges we had, um, we had very limited demographics about the young people, so we asked age, gender, location, but we didn't ask disability, faith, social economic background, are they poorer or richer? Um, and that's a problem because the final results that we got, we can only say between 3 and 16% chance that that was because of scouting. Um, the questions were made up by us. They were not what we call validated. So uh, researchers have been for decades developing tools to measure the outcomes in young people. Um, they've been tested on hundreds of thousands of young people and they test it to make sure that if I ask um, yourself a question then another person understands the same by the question and if I give an answer today I'll give the same answer in two weeks time. Um, because our questions were not tested we have no idea if the results are valid or not. Uh, and finally, and I think a significant challenge for the European region and WASM, is that there are different interpretations of these outcomes. So one of our outcomes was spirituality. One of the questions we asked to test that was, do you have a faith? Now in the UK, we wouldn't see practicing an organized faith as an objective of scouting within what we call spirituality. But in other countries, of course you would. Other NSOs would say, that is an objective, we are a faith-based organisation. And so the interpretation of the questions could be different. So there's some of the challenges we had. What did we find? So first of all, we asked, what did young people take part in? Um, which sounds really basic, but important. Um, if we don't know how much camping a young person does, then how would we know that camping is important to confidence or self-resilience or independence? We wouldn't. So we asked what young people take part in. Uh, luckily, we found they take part in everything we thought they should take part in scouting, um, with international experiences being least common, it's not surprising, um, working in teams and outdoor adventurous activities being most common, um, which are positive result, uh, confirmed what we'd hope we'd find. I'll now go into the outcomes. So we asked about things like um, life skills and employability, leadership, problem solving, teamwork, emotional intelligence. And what these show you is the difference between a young person in scouting and a young person not in scouting. So really positive results. This is showing across all of those outcomes, our young people are more confident than young people not in scouting. Is there a question? Sorry, sir, what was that? Confidence of this, never mind. Oh, I see, sorry, why well, I don't have that to hand. Um, the data analyst gave us the different confidence intervals. The question was, how confident can we be? Um, 
these are all statistically significant. The bigger challenge is, is this because of scouting or because the young people who come to scouting were always going to be more confident, which I'll come back to later on. Um, on well-being, again, we measured physical activity, uh, whether they are pro-environment, curious about the world, resilience and spiritual and self-reflection. And this is where this becomes starts to be really interesting. So we do physical activity really well. That's probably not a surprise, but uh, and it's it's welcomed. Spiritual and self-reflection, there was only a 4.2% difference. And in fact, that starts to become borderline, not statistically significant. It was lower in some of the other countries. Now that's a great result. It's a great result because now we can have a conversation about, is this important to us? Maybe it's not. Maybe we don't do it. We don't achieve it. So why do we claim it? Or you say it really is important. So what are we going to do about it? Because something's not working. So part of this whole impact measurement agenda is being open to failure. Failure is a really good result because then you can do something about it. Otherwise, we would just pretended we were doing this for decades to come. Um, and then a few more outcomes around citizenship. So our young people felt much more belonging to their local area. Um, they were more open to diversity. Uh, one of the biggest results was active citizenship and volunteering. Um, and it took more seriously responsibility and trustworthiness. So across all the outcomes, we found scouts were more developed, more confident in these outcomes than non-scouts. We also found that they volunteered more. So all of these questions before were subjective. They were questions like, um, I feel a connection to my family. But you can also ask much more tangible questions. How many hours a month do you volunteer? And you can see a stark difference there in what scouts and non-scouts do. Really powerful evidence, particularly for funders and decision makers. A couple of last points. Where it starts to get really interesting is when you don't take a global look, but you break it down by demographics. So do we achieve the same outcomes for young people from richer or poorer backgrounds? Do we achieve the same outcomes for white or people of color? And they're important questions to ask because if we're blind to that information, we could be letting young people down. So when we checked against gender for our different outcomes, there were small differences, not significant, but small differences. One of the problems here now is sample size. If you don't get enough people to respond to your survey, you won't be able to do this. Um, you probably need at least a thousand young people to respond to do just a global look. Um, we're not, a f we're, we're n uh, certainly in the UK, we're a very white organisation and that's meant that we've not been able to look at what's the impact on young people of colour. So part of what you have to think about is how you get to different types of young people to answer your survey. Uh, and again, keeping in mind that failure is a good result here, we didn't find any c much of a correlation between the length of time that you're in scouting and the outcomes you achieve. That doesn't feel right, right? You would think the longer time in scouting, the bigger the outcome. We didn't find that. Now again, this was our first attempt. The questions were made up. We didn't have a very big sample size. But that sort of evidence should cause your National Scout organization to think about do we need to do something about that? It could be exciting. One of our volunteers said, so actually, if we could get young people into a short, sharp period of scouting, we can still make an out, we can still achieve something. That's interesting for our model. Okay, so going forward, um, in the UK, 
we are now running as we, as I speak. We have a, a another round of our survey out to young people. Uh, we've asked more demographic information, so we'll be able to to take the young people who are not scouts and match them better with the young people who are scouts because we've asked about disability. We've asked questions and that tells us about how poor or rich they are and the areas that they live. We are using validated questions. I won't spend long here, but in the workshop we can talk more. Um, we've taken the theory of change and said what questions are already out there being used to test these outcomes. Um, and there are plenty of them very closely aligned to the outcomes of scouting. Um, we're going to use that to prove our theory of change. So we'll ask our researcher to say, we claim that living by the promise is important to achieving our outcomes. Is that true? Is there a connection between the two? Um, we claim that making choices and making decisions is important to achieving our outcomes. Is that true? Because we've asked young people, how often do you get to make decisions in scouting? How often do you reflect on the promise? And so you can connect the two between the method and the outcome. Uh, we're going to think about how we can uh, take our outcomes and put a monetary value next to it. How much is it worth for young people to have better well-being? to society? How much is it worth if they are more likely to go to university? Things like that. We're going to try now and make this useful for local scouting. So if you can get the buy-in of your local volunteers to get m enough of their young people to take part, you could give them evidence that's specific to their region. And again, funding from local authorities should become much easier because you have the evidence to back up your bids and funding applications. And finally, and uh, I'm ignorant to how much this is true for other countries, but in the UK, we could connect who young people in scouting are with their educational outcomes held by government. We could connect the young people we have in scouting to whether or not they apply for university and whether or not they get into university. By doing that, you start to have objective evidence. It's not the view of the young person, it's what they've achieved. On a European and world level, um, I, I may mean, know some details of this, but it is worth saying that without the WASM pilot project, we would be nowhere near where we are at the moment. Um, they put a lot of time and effort into this, and there will be another uh, round of piloting coming up. I, th I think France and Mexico are involved. Um, I'm not sure. It's something you can maybe ask some WASM colleagues later. And they already have some tools that you can use around social impact. Um, personal reflection that you d feel free to disagree with. Um, I think for, for a, a European region or for WASM as a whole, the goal of a one survey used across scouting globally, I think is unachievable and unhelpful. The questions will always be open to local interpretation. Your NSOs will have different priorities. What is possible is a bank of questions that your NSO could choose to use and taking a standardised approach to demographics. That way, if I know which countries have chosen the same questions as us in the UK, then we can compare and contrast. Um, I also think that the more that we can open up this data, then the more analysis we can get for free. Um, we recently, uh, in the UK, there was a, a research project done over 50 years into mental well-being. And they found that scouts and guides, because they grouped it together, were 15% less likely to have mental health issues when they were older. 
and that was controlled for whether they were poor or rich, what background they came from. It's really robust evidence. Nothing to do with us. <laughs> we had we only found out about it through the news. <laughs> um, the more we can open up data, researchers will fall over themselves to take that data and give us meaningful insights. Uh, and if we can do that on a international level, the more interesting it becomes. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, that was nowhere near as interesting, exciting as Edward and Trisha's talk, but thank you for sticking with me. Um, and I'll just leave you with this. Um, this is, this is this whole impact agenda, uh, there's a danger that we prioritize having statistics over making things better. And you should only, w you should think hard about what is it you really want to know about? What do you need to know about? What do you value most? And take a step at a time to getting to a point of having evidence of those things. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.